This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and welcome to finding random grey models on your shelf and deciding to paint them. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this 3D printed Imperial Fister. I'm not really sure who this guy is. He resembles vaguely someone that I had already seen upon the internet, and I don't really care. He looks really cool, he is yellow, and hopefully if you are painting yellow space robot men, then this video might help you coming up with your scheme for how you paint your yellow space robot men. Of course, if it does, make sure to leave a like, leave some words in the little space that they leave for you to leave some words, and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let's just get straight into the video. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos on how I paint a space marine using volumetric lighting to create volumes and shadows and highlights on a model, then you would know that the process for this is pretty straightforward. I start out with a black base, I add volumetric white ink over the top of that, I then add an oil wash to get into the creases, and I scrape off all the highlight edges of that oil wash. This is the result of that process. Using, funnily enough, Imperial First Contrast Color, which is essentially one of the newer contrast paints, it is a very strong color. Thin it down about probably around two parts paint to one part water. I'm then going to use Eandon Yellow Contrast Paint and this is going to create a little bit more volume over the black parts. It will tone this orange. Basically, the color that it creates is a kind of orangey brownish color. I used Cassandora yellow, which is a wash over the top of that. Unfortunately, this isn't available as much anymore, I don't think. I'm pretty sure that the new ones don't behave in the same way, so I can't speak for the newer paints. But the basics is I want to have a yellow highlight and I want to have a really nice, deep, rich orange shadow i then work a lot of black back into the parts that are not actually armor and this is because i need a good base to start from when i start working on the next details that come along i also have a really bad habit or good habit depending on how you look at it of highlighting everything with white especially miniatures especially these little robot dudes and making those edges white is such a stark contrast it looks great if you don't like it please skip this step i don't really care if you don't like it i like my miniatures to look like this and if you want your miniatures to look like mine then you can use that idea i don't really care I use dark silver dry brushing over all of the gun pieces just to give them a little bit of a metallic sheen to them. I also did that across all of the piping that runs across this dude. I'm not really sure if this is because he farts a lot and he's trying to make sure that his suit doesn't stink when he gets off of duty. But either way, he's got a lot of piping on him. Oh, now that I notice he's got a really big hand. I literally just painted this dude and I forgot that he has a big hand. That's why he has pops. Okay, I get it now. I painted his loincloth in a brown and I pretty much just gave it a little bit of texturing by using a little bit of white mixed into that brown which is desaturating the color but it's okay at the scale because it won't be too noticeable especially for the area that it's in i just needed some textures there i then started working on some of the smaller details using tesseract glow on something this small if you put down a white dot and then put tesseract glow it will create a nice effect and it'll be a nice vibrant look so if you need something to stand out that is glowing like a light or something then this is a good way of doing it i used for his really cool picnic blanket that he has over his shoulder i used flesh terrors red and i just gave it a base coat a solid base coat and i came back in with a darker skin tone just to highlight some of the edges on the blanket and this is just something that he carries with him so that his feet don't get dirty when he sits down and has lunch during a hard day's battle you will notice i'll kind of chop and change between things i'm kind of working on a load of things at the same time someone kind of asked me how long did it take me to get this model painted when i looked at the footage and worked out all the total time this was roughly around three and a half maybe four hours worth of work give or take is by no means to a competition level that's for sure it i'm still a beginner i have no idea what i'm doing with warhammers 
but I do know that I kind of am figuring it out and I'm happy to share all my tips and tricks with you as I go along. There is a gun on his pack and I've realized as we go along that these guns in the Warhammers tend to glow a lot and this is a good time for me to practice some of my OSL which is object source lighting. For this I'm gonna just start out by painting a nice light fluorescent color first. You want to just get the base tones kind of down and then you're going to paint white back into the light source again and you're going to paint the color of the light source. So in my case that color was tesseract glow. I went back in with whites just to push some more of those highlights across the suit just to make certain things stand out a little bit more. I want to use white in a way that will create depth on the model. This is the main reason why I like using white because the separation between panels is so stark unfortunately if you make a mistake it is very noticeable but if you don't make a mistake it really looks super clean and it makes the model stand out quite a lot at least in my opinion a good trick for doing edge highlighting on models like this is just to make sure you use a nice fresh brush I've definitely noticed that the older my brush the not so good it is to do edge highlighting with the brush so I like to use a nice fresh brush and this makes sure that it is so much easier to do the job that I need to do. Once all that stuff had dried from the initial painting of that OSL on the top of the shoulder pads and everything I went back into the gun and again this is where I said I laid down more whites just to boost the colors and this helps to make that OSL a bit brighter. And that's where I called the model done. Hopefully you managed to pick something out of this video that will help you painting your yellow space robot boys. And if it doesn't help you with that, it might help you painting other yellow things in the future, whether they're big or small. Of course, if you did like what you saw in the video, make sure to leave a like on it. Leave some words because that will help Uncle Algy the Rhythm to know that more people need to see my video. Of course, I would like to say a super special thank you to my Patreons for all that blinding of marbles that they are affording to give me. And if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, then the best thing you can do is just f off. Now I'm gonna go find some more great things to paint on my shelf.